Capital. This is Rollin in the Morning Show. 7.32, we uh, want to welcome to the uh, program a uh, gal that, well, what an what a impressive record. Set 39 national records, 11 world records. Prior to the 1990s, she was the most successful U.S. female Olympian. In her prime, widely considered to be the greatest female swimmer in the world. No pressure, Shirley Pashoff, welcome to the <laughs> program. How are you? <laughs> Boy. I'm well, Roland. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. And of course, what what a timely interview we've got the chance to talk to you about. Uh, as you've got this new book out here uh, called "Making Waves: Your Story of When You Were in the Olympics in uh, the uh, 1970s, competing against Germany," um, you had two gold medals. Thinking you probably should have had another four on top of that, but Germany, as we discovered about a decade later, was uh, a doping thing. And then last night we learned that the IOC is not going to allow Russia, their uh, track and field team, uh, down to Rio de Janeiro. Thoughts on that this morning? Well, it's just like history repeating itself, I guess. You know, I started I started writing this book, and you know, two years ago not knowing what we know today about the Russian team. And it just seems to be um, so ridiculous that this is happening again, um, but also ridiculous that the East German women swimmers in 76 that I had to swim against are allowed to keep their medals when now the IOC is saying, like, these people can't go to the Olympics because they're doing the same thing that the East Germans did. It, I don't understand how they're not letting these ones go and these ones get to keep the, their medals. It's just kind of um, ridiculous. So the Olympic Committee um, refusing to change the results back from the 70s, 72, 76, 80, and 88 Olympics after they, you know, have records that, yes, there was doping going on. What is their reasoning why they won't change that? Yet they did go back and strip Lance Armstrong of his bronze medal 13 years after he won it. What, what are they using as their justification for that? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know why they can pick and choose who they want to um, take the medals away from and make it right. Uh, and I don't know why they won't go back to 76, um, especially since they made this kind of eight-year rule when, um, when the wall came down. It was 13 years after 76. So it just kind of like threw us out of the whole loop altogether. Um, it should be an infinite, I think, rule where there's no, I don't know what the, where the eight-year rule came from, but um, technology has been such that they can go back farther than that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I wish I knew why they don't go back, but they pretty much have their own mentality on that. Well, let me ask you this, Cheryl. Let's take. Let's go back to 1976. You're at the Olympics and and you're swimming. Uh, you back then were as as the title of your new book says, "Making Waves." You were you were saying something's not right here. What what did you see? What did you suspect? What did you know? And and tell us what happened. And uh, you know how you were trying to get uh, some focus and, and somebody go, "Hey, I agree." Well, um, in the, at 72 Olympics in Munich, um, there was. We didn't even know that the East Germans were there. I mean, they weren't any kind of, like, anything to deal with. I had to deal with Shane Gould from Australia. She was the best freestyle swimmer out there, and that's what my competition was. And then the next year, in 73, um, they had the very first world championships in Yugoslavia for swimming, and out come these girls that look like wrestlers. I mean, they've got on these suits, these swimsuits that are skin tight, they kind of even looks like a singlet and stuff, and they were huge, and then they start beating us by, you know, 20 seconds in a 200-meter freestyle, and popping out of the pool like they just did nothing at all. It was just such a, it was like a freak show, and then the four years from 72 to 76, I had to deal with that the whole time, you know, in international swimming, and they were, they would set a world record, and I would, like, work to beat it, and I was swim on the, on the boys' swim team in high school. I swam on the men's swim team in college, and uh, I just figured if I'm going to be swimming against people that look like men, maybe I should swim with the men. And then in 76, I just, I just pretty much had it. I was so frustrated with them getting away with what they were doing. This tiny little country it was 
only producing the best swimmers in the whole world seemed very um, obvious to me, but everyone else was just kind of like, oh, yeah, these girls coming from this communist country, it's so great that they're swimming great and everything. You know, not the fact that, well, then I spoke out in 76 and said that they had mustaches and they had deep voices. <laughs> and then their coach comes back and says, like, well, we didn't come here to sing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was just kind of everyone was just accepting it at the time. There, you know, there wasn't social media where you can, um, you know, go online and say, oh, my gosh, look at this girl, you know. Um, so it was just a different time for us and everything. But the IOC, I don't know why they just don't. They just want to, you know, close their mind and be gone, you know, have everybody die off and forget about it. But I don't think that's going to ever happen. So at this point, are you getting the feeling maybe with uh, the results of the uh, the news story over the nighttime about uh, the ban of the track and field team from Russia for doping, uh, alleged doping, do you get a feeling maybe they are a little more sensitive? Maybe they are opening up a little bit, even though they're not going backwards to change history, but they are at least maybe taking a better stance these days? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of Russian athletes that don't cheat. And, um, they're just, I think they're handling it wrong. It, it's just that they have to be more open about it. I don't, I don't, I think they're, they're being too secretive about what they're doing. And, um, it, it, it's not fair to cheat. That's all there, there is. And they have to, they have to make it blanket the, all the Olympics. Too, you mm-hmm. know, and and go back to '76 and and fix that. And I just don't understand why some people are allowed to cheat and some people aren't. Okay, well, listen. Basically, that's what they're saying. I would love to talk with you, and we could probably talk all morning on this, but I know you've got other interviews to do. The book is called Making Waves. There's a lot more of your story in there. I, one last question: Will you be watching the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I definitely. I love watching the Olympics. All right. Um. Unfortunately, for some people, you, you, they do so well, and it's the first thing that comes to your mind is like, oh, my, I wonder if they're cheating, you know? And, and that's really sad in this day. But um, I love watching the Olympics. I love watching the gymnastics, track and field, swimming. I, I love it all. Well, Shirley, I, I know it's been a while, but uh, congratulations on what you did do representing the U.S. Uh, we're proud of that. I get uh, look forward to uh, finish reading this book, Making Waves. And uh, if you ever make it up here to Northern California, let's continue this conversation, okay? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley Babishoff. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay.